In this part, we are going to set up the entity framework and also create the appdb context file for our app. The first thing we need to do is that we need to install the necessary packages for entity framework core. For that, you need to go to tools and then go in here to NuGet package manager. And you can either choose the package manager console and then you can manually type the packages names or you can just go to the manage NuGet packages for solution. In here, go to browse and then search for entity framework core. From the options that we get in here, we are going to first install the Microsoft.entity framework core, which is the main package for the entity framework core. This package is required to use the core functionalities of the entity framework core. I'm just going to select, then check the project, and then install the latest version. Then accept the license. And now this is installed. Now, depending on the database server that you want to use, for example, you can either use SQL Server, which is going to be our case, but you can also use MySQL Server. This package contains the SQL Server database provider, which allows Entity Framework Core to interact with an SQL Server database. So, same way, just select and then install. The same way, we need to accept the license. And the last package that we're going to install is going to be the Entity Framework Core dot tools. And this package provides command line tools and Visual Studio integration for the Entity Framework Core, which are useful for managing migrations and other database operations. So this package is required to enable commands such as add migration and update database in the package manager console, making it easier to manage database schema changes. We are going to talk about the migrations on the next part. So the same way, select the package and then click install, accept the license, and now all the packages are installed. The next step is to create the app DB context class. This class is going to serve as a bridge between the application and the database. For that, we need to just go and create a new folder. I'll just create a new folder. Right click in here, then go to add, new folder. I'm going to name this folder, let's say data. Then right click in here, add. We're going to add a class. We are going to name this class the app db context and then click add. Now, right now, this is just a class and it doesn't have any specific functionality. But if you want to enable this class to manage the database connections, to track changes, and also query the database using the entity framework, we need to inherit from the DB context base class, which is a class that comes from the entity framework core package that we just installed. So in here, I'll just type DB context. We are going to get an error. And we can see that to fix the error, we need to use the Microsoft.entity framework core. Now, the AppDB context is going to serve as a bridge between our .NET app and the database. In our case, we have the SQL database. For us to be able to use specific options, we are going to use the DB context options class, which is a configuration class in Entity Framework Core that holds the settings and options to configure a DB context. It is used to set up and control different aspects of the DB context behavior, such as the database provider, connection strings, and other options. And to allow the app DB context to be configured with the DB context options, we add a constructor that takes as a parameter the DB context options. Now, to create a parameter, just type in here CTOR for short, tab. We are going to get this one. Now, Inside here, we are going to pass as a parameter the DB context options, and in here, pass as a parameter the app DB context in here. Now, you can give this just a name, let's say options. Now, we did pass it as a parameter to the app DB context, but we want to pass it to the DB context as well. For that, we just use the base keyword and then just the options, which is a name that we defined in here. So this is just like the basic setup for the AppDB context, and it might sound a little bit complex in the beginning, but you do set up this class just one time, 
moving forward, we're just going to come back in here, define the classes that we want to use to communicate with our tables in the database. Now there is one last step in here, and that is to configure the AppDB context is going to be the bridge file between our model, so our C sharp code and the SQL database. Let us go to program.cs. Now, since we have the database connection string in here, let us just type builder dot services dot add db context. And now as the db context file, we're going to define our custom class. So app db context is the class that is going to be used. And we have to use the circle app dot data. Here, since we did define that the app db context takes as a parameter the db context options, we can define the database connection string. So in here, let me just type, let's say options that goes to then options dot use SQL server. And you can see that it belongs to the Microsoft entity framework core. Just tab. And then in here, we're going to pass as a parameter the database connection string, which is this one in here. And let's add semicolon. And this is all you need to do to configure the database. This is all for this part. On the next one, we're going to create our first table, which we're going to use to store the posts.